Hey guys, Dan here. Today we talk about something a little different, 3D scanning and how it could be useful for sim racing. So what we have here is the Creality CR Scan Ferret Pro. It's a 3D scanner that works either with your computer attached with this cable or you can also like when you buy it, you get this box here. You can pretty much mount your phone onto this here. And then this goes in between. This is basically a Wi-Fi receiver for the phone so that the phone receives all the data from the scanner and can process the model. But if you want to do really high precision stuff, I would always recommend to connect it to the PC because you just get better quality processing and the model will look a little bit better. And especially for what we are trying today, it's a bit more useful to have it directly connected to the PC. But yeah, let's say you want to 3D scan something in the nature. You can do this. Just use these two accessories, plug in your phone, and you're good to go. But yeah, how does this work? To make it very, very simple, there's an array of camera, like IR, regular cameras. I don't want to go too much into detail how it works, but pretty much you can scan objects and generate an STL file, for example, for 3D printing with it. And even though there are probably niches out there where 3D scanning is more useful than in sim racing, I was trying to find something to show you in the niche so it's not a completely out of scope video. And for that, we want to talk about 3D scanning a wheel. Why can that be useful? Well, you know, it is really hard to actually try out wheels and like feel how the grips feel. And it would be nice to have like a database of steering wheels. I mean, I have so many wheels here. I could all scan them and then you could just 3D print those grips and see if it works with your hands. So scanning a, a wheel takes about 10 to 15 minutes in decent resolution, I would say. Um, since most of the wheels are very, well, not very colorful, like this X29 from GSI, for example, it can help to put on these little stickers. You get tons of them in the box that basically helps the 3D scanner track the object and know where we are. And especially when you're scanning the front and then try to go to the back side, sometimes the scanner loses tracking. And if you add these dots, it can help a lot. You can see I have them on the back, I have them on the top, just like randomly placed here to help with the tracking. And if we actually hop into the software here, let's put the wheel here on this little manual <laughs> turntable. I also have an automated turntable, but from my experience, it was a little bit better to just like take your time, rotate it manually, scan it slowly with a scanner. And the results I got were pretty good. I mean, it's not a perfect scan. It's not like you will have every tiny detail. I mean, the scanner can in theory scan with a resolution of up to 0.1 millimeter and also objects up to two meters. But for what I tried here, scanning the grips, it worked really well. So basically what you want to do is like start the software either on your phone or on the PC. Like I said earlier on the PC, you get a little bit better results for especially for difficult to scan stuff like this, but pretty much go to scan and then you can select the object. So for the steering wheel, we want to go to normal. You can also scan a face and a body. It works, it works really well. I actually scanned my hand to create a holder for sim racing gloves. <laughs> it's, it turned out really well. The gloves fit well. It just, looked a little bit creepy on the wall when I mounted it, but uh, I need to see if I can maybe mount it to the rig or so to just like have a few gloves always available. If someone is interested, I can post the model of my hands. It fits like a glove size L, uh, but today we're looking at the wheel. So we want to do normal size would be small is up to 25 centimeters, medium is up to 50. So this is what we want to go. And if you have very large objects, this is probably more something when you're not connected to a PC. Um, you can scan up to two meter in each dimension. Then there are different scan modes. You can either use the geometry mode, the texture mode or the marker mode. I found with this, what works best is texture or marker. We'll go with the marker mode for now. We don't really need any textures of the wheel anyways. Then accuracy, I've always used high quality. Color mapping is whether you want the textures to be visible on the 3D model. We'll, we'll leave it on here. And then turntable, I mean, basically, rotating the model like this is a turntable. I didn't notice a big difference whether this is set to yes or no. We'll just put it to yes here for now and then we'll go to new scan. So what you want to do, let me position the model here so you can see it better. Take the camera and just hold it in front of the wheel. And now it will automatically tell you what you're supposed to do. Let's remove the, the stand here because then I have a little bit more room Optimal distance, keep it up. So this is a good place to start. And then we click the start button and now it's scanning the wheel. You can see here the green represents stuff that already has been scanned. And pretty much what you want to do is move farther 
it always will tell you what you're supposed to do. It's not ideal that I have the monitor in the background here since that reflects a little bit of the camera light. But you just, as you can see, it's like a really, really easy to do. You basically just want to scan the whole wheel, move further until the whole thing is green. We probably will not scan the whole object here because it, it can take some time. Maybe we'll just do the front side. I have done the full scan of the X29 already and it turned out pretty great. Let's see if it will, yeah, see, especially like when you're uh, approaching the corners of the wheel, it sometimes loses tracking and you need to like, what I found works well is like go over the top. It's just, it's a learning experience. Like, especially if you're new to 3D scanning. Oh, now I scanned my hand. <laughs> Gotta be careful there, but we can remove that later anyways. So let's just, let's just scan the front. We are not doing, oh, now we lost tracking. So what you want to do when you lose tracking is just go to the front or something that is easily recognizable until it turns green again. Because like, if it loses tracking, you see it's red now and insufficient, please. Uh, it says insufficient valid scan points or it will say lost tracking. So when you see that, just go to the front again and wait till it found the tracking again. And yeah, like if I want to scan the full thing, you can also like rotate the camera, try to go to the bottom here. It's yeah, like I said, maybe like 15 minutes or so for this wheel, including my hand. Uh, we'll just to take the front side and once we're done, we click on complete, complete scanning, yes. And now we have the point model here. You see the back side is obviously not processed, so we just do the front. We'll leave all the settings on auto for now. If you do the f full thing, it can help to like tweak the settings here. For example, if we go to... oh. I started the optimization <laughs> that I can show you afterwards. Let's see what it was doing with this basic scan. This is relatively quick on the PC, like on the phone it takes longer and this is a beefy PC, like it doesn't really get much faster than this one. So it takes a lot of processing power to generate these models. But let's see what it comes up with. And here we are, this is the model it created, I mean, as you can see, like I need to scan a bit more closely so it's missing a lot of points, especially like obviously the rear side, nothing has been scanned, but you want to like point the camera to these areas a bit more to the buttons to get really the precise scanning. But you can see the grips already look pretty good here in this model. And if you're done processing, like I said here, you can increase or decrease resolution, sensitivity, or oh, I shouldn't click the buttons. Let's create the mesh. And what that did is basically connect all these points. Like, I mean, it's not the best resolution here right now for the buttons, for example. Like I said, we need a bit more in detail scanning for that. But the grips already turned out pretty well. And if you denoise it a little bit, that can help to remove the roughness on some of these areas. You can also do fill holes. We don't do that now because we didn't scan the back. But like if you scan the whole thing, there are still a few parts where it maybe didn't scan it properly. Then you can just enable fill holes and it will uh, close those for you. Then if we go to color mapping, it should add the texture. You don't have to do this manually, by the way. You can also just click the one click processing and then it will do everything with the settings that it thinks is the best for the scan. And now we actually have a model with a texture on there. It's not ideal lighting because like this scene is obviously lighted for my face and not for the object. What I found works really well, like a nice softbox, for example, that doesn't have harsh shadows. Really good for 3D scanning. Oh, you see also a bit of my hand here. Um, but yeah, I have done this in a bit more detail with the model already. Once you're done, you can click here, export and generate an STL file or uh, object file, for example. But then you want to go to your slicer software and open the file. I'm using the uh, Creality K1 Max 3D printer at the moment. Really good printer, can highly recommend. But this is the scan that I came up with. You can see it looks significantly better because I actually, like, I spent some time with this. I don't want to bore you to death doing this in the video. But um, let's quickly orient this a little bit. What I am interested in 
you can see like even the the clutch pedals it didn't sc scan this one for whatever reason but like even the details like the screws turned out really really well but if we are only interested in the grips what i do is split it up like here we just need i mean we don't need the the stand thingy so we will cut it roughly here start splitting then we remove this bottom part and also i don't really care about the rest of the wheel let's quickly rotate it a little bit more so we can more easily split it i mean i'm not the biggest expert when it comes to slicer software but that's how i do it <coughs> so let's say we only want the grips so we'll split another time here and then let's lay it on this face we don't really need the shifters as well so i would do another split in this here start split delete this and then we can print just this part and i have done that already looks like this turned out really well i mean obviously you want to do a little bit of post-processing on the model like these are the dots for example that i put on they are still slightly visible in the scan but you don't really feel them once you printed it out but still you can do a little bit of smoothening here but i have to say i mean obviously this is a nice rubber grip and feels slightly more comfortable but to get an impression how a wheel will feel in your hands if you have a 3d printer or if you know somebody that has a 3d printer i think this is better than nothing so i'm thinking to maybe scan a few of the more popular wheels i mean i don't know how it is regarding distribution of these files if there are any like i probably would just ask the wheel manufacturers if they would be fine with a scan of that but i think it's a very nice way to see because it it feels very very comparable i mean obviously it's not as squishy but it's a very nice way to see if this will work with your hands or not without having to buy the wheel and testing sim racing equipment is really really difficult so yeah let me know in the comments down below if you would be interested in something like that if you are interested in the 3d scanner i mean you can use it to scan a variety of stuff this is the creality ferret scan pro um, in germany it's 460 euros there's also a cheaper alternative with a lower resolution no wi-fi probably more than sufficient for stuff like that um, but yeah it's pretty amazing fascinating technology it's it's good to play around with that and i really think for sim racing this could be a good use case to help people test different wheels so yeah let me know in the comments down below if you would be interested in some of the scans if you like the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to not miss any future videos also let me know if you would be interested in more of these diy 3d printing 3d scanning type of videos in the future or not um it's kind of like a new field for me to explore i'm having fun with it but yeah just let me know and that's already it for the video i hope to see you all in the next one bye bye